After that Chinese spy balloon, students launching this experiment have something to worry about. Will it get shot down? Balloon wars. First, that Chinese spy balloon is shot down. Break one, blast one, that is a big kill. Then a harmless $12 weather balloon like this, apparently destroyed by a $400,000 American missile. Now, it turns out thousands of balloons like these are floating in the sky at any given time. So where are they all coming from? See it right there? Many come from balloon hobbyists like John Garache and Rick Eason. I don't think there's much chance that we get shot down today. We were invited to Boardman Glenwood Middle School in Boardman, Ohio, where they enlisted the help of their seventh grade science class for their latest launch. We use weather balloons to gather data about like all sorts of things, and most people probably assume it's just weather um, because of the name, but it's not just weather. We're using it to gather all sorts of data and information. We have a series of different experiments here, sun-dried tomato bread, jelly, sweetest fish, and fruit snacks, and we're going to test all the different altitude levels and see how the oxygen affects that. The goal? sending it up into space, and then safely recovering it back on Earth. We're going to float at an altitude of around 90 to 100,000 feet. So what this is, is this, we're testing this out for the first time. It's a, it's a floating nozzle. Um, it should vent the gas when we get up close to that altitude. And then we have a cut down here that will, uh, that will cut the balloon down. Then it's inflate time. Oh, there we go. Using this tank of helium gas, it takes these astronauts in the making roughly 20 minutes to blow up the balloon. It's not that heavy, it just kind of feels like, yeah, it's like soft. Once filled to its full capacity, it's ready for liftoff. The entire school showed up for the show. With the whole school being out here, it makes it more fun because they were all wanting pictures and stuff taken of them. There it goes, up, up, and away. It's a successful launch. 36,000 feet. All right. So will we ever get it back, or could it even get shot down? The airspeed is zero, so an F-15, 16, 22 can, could surely catch up with it. I don't want to cause a national scene, though. <laughs> Eason says that's highly unlikely because they filed a notice with the FAA. What this does is this puts the, a notice of where a balloon is, how high it's going, what direction it's going in, and it gets into the system so pilots in their pre-fight briefing can um, you know, see what the seat is there. Look at the extraordinary video it took in the stratosphere. Over a four-hour period, it climbed to an altitude of more than 100,000 feet above planet Earth. Using a tracking device, we chased after the balloon. The balloon's about 8,000 feet up. We expect it to be on the ground in about seven or eight minutes. And uh, we have a predicted landing spot, so it's on up here just a few miles away. So we'll see how close we can get to it. So where did it finally land? Way up here on top of a pine tree, 170 miles away from the school where it was launched. I'm optimistic, but I've been wrong before. Um, <laughs> It looks like it should be fairly easy to get down. Using this large pole, they finally retrieved it. Oh, like that one? And no missile took it down. My guess is that they're probably backing off a little bit on what they're shooting down since they're finding out that, well, there are these amateur balloons up there. And the parachute is down. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Another successful launch. Another successful launch, another successful recovery. As for all these future astronauts. OK, that's on. You can talk to that now. You're on camera. Oh, finally. They can't wait to see how their research projects fared on their first mission to space. This type of learning is probably the best learning you're going to get. The hands-on, the problem-solving, um, they're applying what they're learning to real-world situations. When they see the data and they see the effects of the air pressure on their experiments, that wow moment, it's very authentic. And I hope it sparks them to seek careers in STEM and, and weather balloons and reporting and meteorology.